yeah. you know these are biological resources that yes. a lot of Kenyan farmers have had and then all of a sudden they have to sign up get exactly. you know get a uh, certification exactly. to use the seeds that they were always using and they have been using they can no longer exchange it what does this mean for the local farmer my, my question uh, I, I will ask here is that uh, our policy makers who do they represent mm -hmm. because if they're coming from our homes, then they should be representing us. They should be hearing our voices. They should, they should be aware of the situation so that any policy that they are, you know, they, they, they are passing concerning food ties with supporting us, supporting the farmers, building the household economy. But if you pass a policy that has no meaning to building the economy of the household, that is the, the lowest. Right then I, I wonder who you're representing. I'm sorry, but, but that's, that, that, that's, that's my stand. And, right. Yeah, and that's how I see it. Yeah. And Dr. Njoki, you have mentioned that around 80% of the vegetables, the traditional vegetables that a lot of Kenyans consume yeah. are classified as weeds. Yes. In studio, I think we have some of the traditional yeah. vegetables. If you could just tell us, what do we exactly. have here today? <laughs> here, here, actually, according to policy, according to science, this are actually weed. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody formulating chemicals to destroy this. Right. But if you look at them, mm -hmm. these are vegetables. Right. Yes, these are vegetables. Having different names from different communities, mm -hmm. I like using our traditional names. I like using our native names. Right. Because a name has, an, it has a meaning, it's an identity, mm -hmm. it is an ownership. Yeah. So when we change the names of our food, then it means that food belongs to somebody else and they can do whatever they want mm -hmm. with our food. And that is why they were able to classify it right. as weed. Right. This is, uh, somebody decided this is... Uh, what do you call it? The waddling Jew, right. in my mother tongue. Right. This is Mongei in my mother tongue. Right. This one is highly nutritious. Right. It's able to treat uh, any chest and throat infections. Mm -hmm. It is high in iron, zinc, right. and magnesium. Same with this. This is dandelion. And there's somebody who is doing a research. I don't want to talk about it here. Right. Because they're saying dandelion has a capacity to treat some of the cancers and especially leukemia mm -hmm. and, and, and other related uh, cancers. Which would be an advancement in health. Yep. Mm -hmm. This here is, uh, I, I like calling it the African blue pill. Right. And, and I love it mm -hmm. because it enhances the, the male stamina. Mm -hmm. You've had our men right. always <laughs> dying in, 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 in <laughs> after taking some blue pill. Right. <laughs> but, this is known. I, I used to see my grandfather chewing on it. I thought, mm -hmm. I thought he was just enjoying it. But mm -hmm. when I did the study, I discovered it helps in increasing the sperm count. Right. It also helps in, uh, in building, uh, strengthening the uterus mm -hmm. and balancing the woman's hormone. And this is a traditional solution. To this is problem. a tradition. This is a weed, but it's a, it grows everywhere. It is right. a solution. Dr. what is the traditional name? So that people maybe can go look for it. My my <laughs> my, my local name, mm -hmm. the Kiku you call it, uh, Moroganake. Right. Kanamurira Gaba. Okay. Yes. And then here is the blackjack. I love the blackjack. Uh, we usually see it growing exactly everywhere. everywhere. Very resilient. Plant. And the blackjack, you can eat the whole of it from the roots, okay. the leaves, the jacks themselves. Mm -hmm. It is very good. It, it, it normally helps to stabilize the blood sugars. Right. It normally helps the body to, it enables the body to produce glucose or to convert the sucrose, right. the glucose into insulin. Mm -hmm. So it regulates the blood sugar in the body. Right. Yes. It's a weed. Mm -hmm. A weed. <laughs> in quotes, a weed. Yes. Yes. This other one, it has thorns. Okay. It's called shonge in my language. Shonge. Very high in zinc and magnesium. Right. Yes. We've talked about that. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. So, and many others. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. About 99%, 99.9% of our vegetables right. are weed. Because we find them growing uh, all over. Mm -hmm. But we don't bother. Mm -hmm. And then our health is affected. It's like uh, we create a chemical problem. 
and we have a chemical solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Creating a problem and a solution that yeah. was not even required in the first exactly. place. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of the clips that we just play, played yeah. was yeah. talking about how some of these traditional plants yeah. are more climatized to some of the regions within Kenya yes. and are naturally overcoming climatic yes. uh, situation or climatic changes. If you could yes. just tell us a little bit more about that. You know, our, our indigenous seeds are resilient. Right. And they are adaptable to our climate. And I'll give you an example. And. Uh, I hope you don't mind me talking about my background. No problem. Growing up in the village, yes. I come from a place called Ladi. Mm -hmm. Grow up, growing up in the village, I used to see my mother directing us to start planting in January. Mm -hmm. Think about January. Right. And our seeds would stay on the ground until mid-February, mm -hmm. where there was some, you know, some, some short rain, mm -hmm. like two, three days. And then they would start germinating. Right. And then in March, We'll have the long rains, mm -hmm. and by then we've already started weeding and you know, and uh, they are sprouting, they are strong, mm -hmm. and they'll continue to grow. But today, mm -hmm. our seeds, mm -hmm. the ones that we have today that are not indigenous, mm -hmm. they need the rain so that you can start planting. Right. I did an experiment, and I think I will take you to see that. Yes, please. Just <laughs> recently, yes. Uh, where are we are working at Caro. I just decided to plant the indigenous seeds when it was hot. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, they lay in the ground and then immediately the rain, the rain hit. Mm -hmm. Within no time, the seeds started plow, sprouting. Mm -hmm. And right now they're, they're good and we're still not having no, too much rain. Mm -hmm. So that is a practical example of how our seeds are resilient and they're adaptable to climate change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the way they've been preserved there is no chemical. They have been preserved naturally. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time we come to harvesting them, they have completely matured. Mm -hmm. There is no moisture in them. So, and then, then the storage also matters. Mm -hmm. So when you put them on the ground, mm 